of ESPN's Rivalry Week continue from one of the Big East's toughest tourist tracks, Gamble Pavilion and Stores, as Providence pays a visit to UConn. Connecticut's mid-season malaise is connected to the untimely suspensions of key veterans Kirk King and Ricky Moore. Three straight losses have put the Huskies in a conference corner. Tonight, they have to come out fighting. Providence is a team on a mission. Once considered a team of promise, the Friars believe that they've now come of age and that the best is yet to come. It's Providence and UConn denied in stores. The Friars have won three in a row. The Huskies have lost three straight, but Providence has never won in this building. There's a lot on the line as we send you back to the studio. Standing by, our guys Chris Fowler and Digger Phelps. Fellas? Thanks. Tip off minutes away. They do get Ricky Moore back for next week's game with the Hoyas. Won't help them tonight, though, against the Friars. Chris, tonight in Hartford Civic Center, there is a boat show, but <laughs> UConn is on a sinking ship in stores without Ricky Moore in Providence's pressure defense. Spoken like a skipper who's gone down with a few chips. <laughs> oh, Good me. night in basketball tonight. Kansas, another road test. And then the second half of our doubleheader, Carolina and Duke from Cameron. The Dukies have lost seven straight to the Tower Heels. They are desperate to end that streak tonight. Should be a lot of fun with Mike and Dick in game number two. But after this, it's back to stores. Ross Jamal Jones and the shorthanded Huskies against the Friars. We'll see you at halftime. I'm Sheila Sardina, and I've been touched by cancer. This year in Rhode Island alone, 6,100 residents will discover they have cancer. 2,500 will die. Cancer is striking our neighbors, our friends, and our families. The leading nonprofit organization funding cancer research and public awareness is the American Cancer Society. A Stars for Life campaign has been organized, and we need your help. Local businesses are selling gold stars. My star reads, I want to live. Please participate. Be a shining star. There's one part-time job where you're judged solely on your abilities, the Air National Guard. It's a part-time job that tests your limits and gives you the chance to learn career skills, working side-by-side -side with the finest people in the field, people like you, the Air National Guard. Get 90 days same as cash on anything in the store, plus free shipping and handling on the Health Strider treadmill. For details, visit a Health Rider store at a mall near you. This morning, strange things are happening all over the world. Shops are about to open empty. Parts suppliers are partless, and assembly workers have nothing to assemble. Is this any way to run a business? With FedEx it is. Every morning, the world gets just what it wants, just when it needs it, without expensive warehousing. Gone today, here again tomorrow. Now that's the way the world works. ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Doubletree Hotels and Guest Suites, an official partner of the NCAA and proud provider of sweet dreams. And by Chrysler, exploring the new frontiers of automotive technology. What's new in your world? Welcome back to Gamble Pavilion and welcome back to Rivalry Week here on ESPN. And this one promises to be a good one because a couple of Big East foes, Providence and UConn. Hi, everybody. Dan Schulman and Bill Raftery with you. And the big story, it's been the big story for about 10 days out of UConn. The suspension, of course, of Kirk King, the lone scholarship senior, Ricky Moore, the man at the point. Look at the numbers that these two put up. An appeal will be heard, and sh we should know by Friday what's going on. But in the meantime, UConn has lost all three games without these two guys. Well, King very important on the glass, but uh, Ricky Moore, the admiral in the jargon of Digger Phelps, they lose him. It's not the same team without him. 
Providence has as many offensive weapons as any team in the Big East, but if you had to pick out one guy, would it be Austin Crozier? Uh, he's a delightful performer. He's impressed a lot of the NBA scouts with his ability to shoot outside, but more importantly, the ability to spin in traffic, to finish with the best of them, occasionally straight in, once in a while with the kiss, but this is the power. He attacks the rim. Real tough inside player. It's rivalry week. Here are the rivalry numbers. UConn leading the all-time series 29 to 19, and Providence has never won in this building. This might be their best chance yet. Time now to take up the lineups brought to you by Doubletree as we show you the starting fives for both teams, beginning with the visiting Friars and God Sham God, just a sophomore. What can you say? Fourth in the conference in assists, second in steals. He gets it all started, distributes the ball to all the options that he has. For the hometown Huskies, this is a young lineup. Three freshmen are starting, including Jake Voskel. He's been a man on the boards recently, but he's got his work cut out for him tonight. Ruben Garces on the other side has been a monster on the glass. Jim Calhoun not too relaxed today, not happy no. with his team off of their performance on Sunday, hoping that he can fill that void at the point position and rotate a lot of players. He says he's had to bring along the young players a little more quickly than he would like. This guy, he's not a young player. He's a fourth-year senior, has seen it all, and wants to lead this team back to the NCAAs where they haven't been in three years. And, Dan, it's got to go through him. It's very important he gets a lot of touches. He's unselfish. He's sound. He knows the game. But occasionally Providence forgets Austin, and that's not to their advantage. Pete Gillen, in his third year with Providence, has had some success, but this might be the best team he's got. They've got four seniors, three of them start, and they control. Huskies, man, -a -man Dan Schulman. What do you do when they start zone? Uh, with the <laughs> figure stuff that I know. Here's that drop step we saw in the open. Took the hit. On the glass early are the Friars, but now the first possession to the Huskies. They'll push. They're going to have to be patient against the press on occasion. Monquencio Hartman gives UConn the lead. Quentin with the kiss. Got to run. Follow no good by Garces off the miss by Derek Brown. A couple of close-in chances, but no points yet for Providence. You notice Providence with the push and Connecticut not responding. Very fortunate to come up. Very important that UConn stay in this one, maybe take an early lead, keep the crowd in it. They've lost three straight at home. They haven't lost four straight at home in 25 years. And UConn's going to have to execute. And a good half-court defense by Providence. They're very sound. Keep you in low numbers. Hamilton elevates and misses the long jumper, but the long rebound goes right to Rashamel Jones. Vasco kept it alive. There's another look for Jones. Ah. Shoot it when you're that good, right? What did he make in a row in the corner today in their drill? 16 between so, Jones and Ricky Moore, who's practicing again. Look at the experience difference in the number of career starts. Absolutely incredible when you think of Vasco being the freshman, Hamilton, a guy that's going to be a great performer in this league. Another fresh. Barnett, very talented. All young people, even though he's the third year guy, JC King. Ah. Going down early for the Friars. They're already 0 for 5 from the floor. The early push. Harden it again. Yeah, I, I think it's dangerous when you start jacking it up and let Providence go in the open floor. The lower scoring it is, the better chance you can have. Well, I, I think Providence makes you score. I think you've got to take your shots. I don't think that was the particularly good attack. It's a good one. Don't be afraid. Garces with a jump hook. Look at the strength. Pretty. And finally, the first two points of the game, Derek Brown gets him for the prize. And what was the nickname they uh, put on Ruben Garces? Guns. Yeah. That's right. That's what they used to call me when I was in yeah. <laughs> A real stud around the glass. 6'9", about 240. They don't let him get involved in the rebounding drills, right? He beats everybody up in practice. I asked a, uh, <laughs> a couple of the coaches, too. They said, that's part of it, but also let other guys understand. Here comes a real tough one as they fell asleep in the three-second lane. They want the other guys to improve rebounding-wise, so that's another reason they take Garces out of the drill. 
posting up or going outside, this is where Austin Crocher is tough. I mean, he can bring the smaller guy down on the box or face up on a bigger guy. There's Shamgod and Brown for three. Will pop out. That's really good aggressive defense. All five Providence points to Derek Brown, who's averaging just about as many points as Crozier is, but doesn't get the notoriety. Now, this is the tough thing. It's going to make Hamilton better out there running the point. Now, he can't dribble it again. It's hard to put the ball on the floor. Pardon it. Nice look inside. A tough pass, though, for Freeman to come up with, and Shamgott starts him the other way. Look at all the numbers. Crozier. Rebound of Oscar uncontested. Now Sam got really a talented point performer. Made sure he got it to Austin. UConn without Moore, without a true point guard in the lineup. Whoa! <laughs> uh, they count the goals, said there was some interference. Goaltending on PC, but Freeman, what a heart. I mean, Sunday all over the offensive glass. This is a 6-5 guy, invaluable performer. Gets a little hesitation. Wolf! It goes his way. A little two, three look now by UConn. Freeman working hard inside against Garces at the other end. It's 5-4 Providence. Shangott will take it. Brown, and he's got all seven right now for the Friars. Well, you go two, three zone, you should be in position to rebound. Four minutes in. Nice pass. Still UConn's ball. Freeman first played with Timmy Thomas at Patterson Catholic. What a high school team that was. We got a timeout on the floor. Derek Brown's got all seven for Providence. They lead by three. What happens when you don't just make something? You invent something. The Chrysler Cirrus, Concord, and LHS. Cab forward design. Speed sensitive steering. Driver adaptive transmission. Four-wheel independent suspension. The Chrysler Cirrus, Concord, and LHS. The difference between just making something and inventing something. What's new in your world? This is Dick. Dick is a creative superstar and the man behind the advertising you're about to witness. We gave Dick a six-pack of Miller Lite and a blank piece of paper and asked him to create a Miller Time concept that beer-loving people would like. This is what he did. This has been a Miller Time presentation by Dick. Thank you for your time. Providence with an early lead on the road, and Derek Brown has all seven points for the Friars so far. Brown came from the City College of Los Angeles, one of two big-time Juco players, along with Garces, that Pete Dillon picked up a year ago. And great without the basketball. Now, this is not a give-and-go situation, but he has a terrific understanding at a Grady High in Brooklyn of where to go, where to be. An invaluable performer in the sense that he can shoot, put it on the floor, and play without the basketball. Very nice addition to this program in Pete Gillen. Is there such a thing as a quiet 17 points a game? He just doesn't get the press. It's a, he just hangs tough. Of course, remember, Pete was taught at the knee of Bigger Phelps. He's got to be a stoop <laughs> and no talent. We spent a few days with Digger. Yeah, now you know Digger's going to get the last word back in the studio. Man. <laughs> that's how Jones would like to get the last word, huh? Filling it up from deep, that's more like it. In fact, that was the corner he was knocking those 16 down today. Ricky Moore and Rashamel Jones put on a shooting display at practice today. And when Jim Calhoun talks about King and Moore, as a strong rebound taken down there by Freeman, he really focuses more on what the loss of Moore means to the team. Maybe that's because he knows he's going to get Moore back. Uh, he, he did a nice pass and cut. Oh, is that pretty? Vasco on the money. He's going to be a good one. But Moore runs the show, Dan, and I think that's what you need. There are a lot of wing players here, good 
jump shooters. You need that intelligence at the point that Moore brings. Moore at the point allows Hamilton to shift over. Jones can do some more things. Zone's got them slowed down a little bit. Good cross court. Shamgod into the middle. And Brown stepped. All of a sudden, it takes Shamgod out of the mix. If you can pinch, don't let him penetrate and create. Everybody's standing still and identifying. They're going to have to move the ball and people. Five points since the TV timeout all by UConn. They've turned a 7-4 deficit into a 9-7 lead. Ruben Garces swats it away. Well, he's been thinking down there. Nice save here by Shamgod. He is a presence. Continuing to improve, too. Some good young point guards in this conference. Uh, Jason Hart last night as he vastly outplayed Shaheen Holloway in Syracuse's win over Seton Hall. A couple of freshman point guards there. And Hart has been solid of late, really running the show. And Shaheen was on a tear, huh? Mm -hmm. Going into that game and played great basketball. So not a good look here. And Pete Gillen wants a 22nd timeout. UConn has taken over the game a little bit since the last timeout a couple of minutes ago. Well, you can't have a rivalry week without this rivalry. Maybe the best in all of college basketball. It's North Carolina and Duke from Cameron. Mike Patrick and Dick Vitale are all pumped up about this one. Dick is pumped up just inhaling air, generally. <laughs> but when it comes to a game like this, it's natural for him. Dean Smith, Mike Krzyzewski, and looking at that huddle, Pete Gillen done a terrific job with this team. A very disappointed in their Miami game, but everybody says the same thing about Miami. His guy, Garces, has been solid. Great defensive maneuvering there, physical around the glass. The key to him is staying on the floor. He has a propensity to get some nickel dimers with that big body. Got to stay out of foul problems. He's been playing better and better in conference play. His numbers are significantly better than they are out of conference. Turnover. That's where you got your Moore problem, right? Hamilton in the open floor. He's usually the guy that's going to catch it and then ignite the break. Moore, since I don't think. Freeman missed the front end. Now you don't make free throws. You can't make any changes in the D. Full court. UConn four and four in the conference. Providence five and three. But right now they're headed in opposite directions. Providence up and UConn down. But we've got a close one tonight. Derek Brown's got the hot hand and a dozen points. That was only a little thing, but Sham got took the ball back to the corner. Fan dribble. Ooh, almost a steal by Murdoch. Hardnett, he's had the hot hand for UConn, and we've got a two-man game right now. Hardnett wanted three, he'll only get two. Nice give back, too. When Murdoch made the gamble, five on four. Derek Brown with 12 for Providence, Monquencio Hardnett with 11 for UConn. This zone's made it tough for Crozier to get many touches.
Should be there. Should stay there. I, th I thought the ball was deflected. Looked like it. Yeah. Murdoch's pleading his case. You hope for his sake it was. Well, I'm, I'm sure it was. <laughs> Either that or he got a little piece of the hand. One of the two. Now, you be the judge here, I guess, huh? And right here, I see what happened. He got fouled, really. Got That's why yep. the quail. A dying duck. I've had a few of those in my day. And not duck a la orange, either. It'll go over to Providence. UConn having trouble keeping a handle on the basketball. They've already turned it over nine times. If that worked, that pass right to the elbow, they got something going. It's almost like a fast break situation. You got to squeeze the apple. Corey Wright back into the game with three fouls as Shamgal sits down. A LeBlanc into the game as well. Enjai in there, big fellow. They think he's coming along nicely. There he is, 7-1, 2-10. Missed the jumper, and Freeman already has six rebounds. He averages just about five. It's about seven minutes a game, and Jai blocks some shots. Big rebound tonight against Canisius. LeBlanc. Well, this 2-3 should keep right in the game. LeBlanc with a three. That's what they said he could do. Sometimes in adversity, Bill, you find something you may not have known you had. Well, I think it helps you down the stretch. I mean, this is a good basketball team. Not a great one, but can mature like a fine wine, like a LeBlanc. Near steal, Corey Wright. But he threw it away, a bullet pass through Crozier, who still has not scored. And I, I like the pass, though, by Wright. Austin just didn't have the hands ready. He had a snap, and the defense was closing. 22nd timeout called by the Friars. They're down one right now. Crozier still looking to get open. Well, we mentioned the inability to get him the ball against this zone. He has had difficulty getting the touches. Corey Wright knowing once this ball is fumbled, he's got to put some heat on it because the defense is closing from the top. And Austin just couldn't get right in and squared up. He's coming off a 27-point game against Canisius, but before that, he scored only four, so he's had his ups and downs this year. They do have some other answers, which has helped this team. And he did say before the game that if we win, I'm content. But I think he's got to be involved for them to win more often. And Jim Calhoun had an interesting thing to say. He said if for Providence, if Crozier gets shut down, they can still win. Calhoun doesn't feel comfortable that if his big scores get shut down, that they could win. But with LeBlanc contributing and Hardnett contributing, they've got the lead despite the fact that big guys haven't been scoring. I'll, I'll tell you, Enjai that time got away with one, but he is a presence in there. Well, they, they absolutely, the seasoning's not there for UConn. I mean, the confidence. I mean, Ray Allen could get you some numbers. They had another Travis Knight could do some thing. This is a whole new picture they're trying to organize and paint. Third foul on Jamel Thomas. So two Providence players picking up three fouls in the first half. Darcy's back in for Njai and Freeman, who missed the front end of a one and one a couple of minutes ago, is going to give it another crack. I got the chance to talk to Ernie Braverman, who's the guardian of Jamel Thomas. He was raised in the projects, and the Marbury family was great to him, and as he got older and unfortunately didn't have the home situation that he would like, they were a nice play here by Charles. Not much you can do if you're Derek Brown. But they are here. Ernie Braverman was a player here at UConn. So obviously, he didn't get much of a recruiting pitch from Calo, <laughs> did he? Ball back in UConn's hands again. Hardnett has had such a strong first half, 11 points. Got to catch the ball, Rushmouth. Nice cut. Turnovers. Well, they give it right back, though, Bill. Nice cut by Crozier. He just couldn't deliver the pass. Good idea. That's going to happen on occasion. Dangerous pass there from Jones off to Hardman. Metric Flavor back into the game for Vosco for the Huskies. Now, Providence is used to winning at low numbers. And you asked before, who does it favor? They both like need no low numbers, I think. Well, they're getting it. It's 19-18 right now as LeBlanc took a step on his way to the bucket. And thought, now 11 turnovers. Thought he had the room, too. Not a bad idea. Just didn't get the ball down quick enough. He's playing with some confidence, though. Yes, he is. 
And Moore's addition will complement these the playing experience of these guys. Moore is due back Monday night when Georgetown will play UConn and Hartford again that you and I will be at. Look at how about that, huh? The hurt ground deep. He's got 15. The rest of the gang has six for Providence. Brown six for seven from the field. Yeah, that should, the way Georgetown played the other night, that should be a heck of a game. Yeah, it should. Uh, the standings as tight as they are in the Big East, every game matters so much. Look at Syracuse making a move now. They sure are solid of late. The old 2 3 zone by the mentor. Was he smiling last night? A little bit. Digger got him to loosen up at the end a little. Had a big guess. Three on the shot clock. And the rebound to Brown. He's doing it all. Got his man in the air. Gave it up. Nice pump fake by Derek Brown. Oh. Got it. Jim what Brown. a night. What a luck. Oh. Thomas, remember that little backhanded look earlier, Dan? Yep. Uh, this one, and not as fancy, but perfecto. Pump fake, nice and smooth. Give it up, move it out the ball. Something Derek Brown does very well. We mentioned earlier, early in the game, we had a highlight where he stuck baseline. Three-point play for Derrick Brown, and he's already surpassed his season average. He's got 18 out of Providence's 24 points. There's a somebody I'm Every year, more than 50 million Americans prepare their own taxes, and almost 8 million make mistakes. Mistakes that can cost them money. But Agent R Block stands behind every return it prepares. And with those odds, maybe it's a mistake not to go to H&R Block. Someone to watch over me. If we all settled for good enough, would things ever be good enough? The luxurious Chrysler LHS. Cab forward design. Speed sensitive steering. Independent touring suspension. Eight-way power seats, personal security system, and now get a lease for just $3.59 a month. The Chrysler LHS. This goes way beyond good enough. What's new in your world? American Express, how can I help you? Mr. Help? Carter, I have you booked on the next flight to Taipei. I when I fly to New York. If they were American Express traveler's checks, there'll be no problem. That's no problem. I'll have your medicine sent to your hotel right away. Right now, you have just over 2,000 membership rewards points. Maybe you'd like to speak to one of our financial advisors. Financial advisors. Talk to me about where you want to be when you retire. I reserve four seats. Would it be anything else? Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, American Express helps you do more. Update from the ACC. Maryland trying to pull into a first-place tie with Wake Forest. They are visiting Florida State. They don't cover Ron Hale, who buries the open three. It's been tight. Knowles by two. Back to UConn. Chris, what a league that is. The ACC just with five outstanding teams in Florida State. No slouch themselves. And we've got a pretty good game here in a rivalry week. Ricky Moore back Monday, maybe sooner. They're appealing. They'll hear Friday, but likely Monday. He is the league leader in assist to turnover ratio. Without him, though, look at the drastic change in the numbers. Well, the comfort blanket, too, for these people that are playing tonight, and they know they can rely on, we'll get them the ball where they can score, where they were going to attack the press. Bosco made another good pass. He understands the game. If you got a big guy that can pass, you can put him all over the floor. And Jim Calhoun said today, we're going to attack it. Our big problem is if we don't have Look at this. Turn, be a threat, great little cut, strong to the goal. But if you don't attack it, it gets tighter and tighter. So you've got to go at it. But the problem is judgment, what shot to take. And that time you get to the line, as Freeman did, it's a good play. And he's got to start hitting. Has twice tonight missed the front end of one and one. And misses here on the season. He's shooting just in the mid-50s, and this is a guy with that body. He gets to the line a whole lot. 56%, not, not what you'd exactly like, but he is a banger. It comes out funny, though, doesn't yeah. it? A little bit to the right. 0 for 4 from the line tonight. That hurts. Straight up man-to-man. -man. 
Got away from the zone. Now this might open up Crozier's get a nice duck in by Garces. You can't say duck in for him. <laughs> Truck in. Crozier, open jumper. He's 0 for 5 from the floor. Still has not scored. Can't beat that look either. Deion Carson back into the game for UConn. Look at him looking over his shoulder, too, for cutters. Are you surprised that Crozier plays Vosco instead of Garces? Well, not really. He can, he, he's strong enough to compete with them. I think the big concern is Freeman's rebounding, and Garces a bull, stronger, bigger. Interesting matchup, though. Nice hands. Carson had it stripped, and Murdoch's out in front of the pack. Pass led him a little too far. Blocked by Vosco. Great effort by the big guy. Richard's got to look up the floor. Sham got very lucky. He didn't pick up a foul there. The rebound to Brown is sixth. Well, they're getting out and running now. Murdoch. Go, go. Up and down they go. They just can't hit their shots. Oh, he's such a good shooter, and he is struggling. Five-point lead for Providence. Sham God to Garces for the easy one. Wow. Well, God divided the world into three parts. Sham God, the open floor, divides the UConn club. Great feel in the open floor. Pete Gillen thinks he has been sensational, feeling out the defense, making the right choices. An 8-0 run by Providence. They've got their largest lead right now at 26-19. And we've got some golf for you. The Royal Caribbean Classic tees off Friday, 3.30 Eastern. This is on the senior PGA Tour. Bob Murphy will be on hand to defend his title against Lee Trevino, Bob Charles, and the Tour's leading money winner from a year ago, Jim Colbert. It all comes your way Friday afternoon on ESPN. Nice little run by Pete Gillen, and uh, maybe Digger will uh, consider the senior tour he's getting close to that age he keeps talking white house white house white well, house all the time it's either the pre washington dc is a new address or a worldwide ambassador to golf <laughs> but sham it. sham has been great don't you think dan some great looks yeah just it, in the open floor he had this red all the way fake to the left little peak right and then the completion Four assists for Sham got averaging better than six a game. Well, he's still can, just a sophomore. And he can rag you out there, too. Rashamel Jones just going around Jason Murdoch, who fouled him. There were two shots the rest of the way for UConn here. Just a minute 37 to play in the half. UConn now at that point may be a little spark. See if they, if they do knock him down. Change the look on the defensive end. Jim, for years, Calhoun has had that 2-2-1. Two, two, and it's what a lot of high school coaches, the pressure of it. Some people consider it a passive zone. He's turned it into an active full-court pressure. I was amazed, and, and I'd heard coming in here at how active their practices and even their game-day shoot-arounds are. Very up-tempo. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody goes by the clock anymore. You notice every Jimmy go into... Roscoe had a shot, passed it up to Jones, who penetrates and had it blocked by Murdoch. Too deep, and he had a kick out to Carson. Shamgod goes right by Carson. And a foul on Vosco. Tried to help out his partner there as Carson got a little bit hung up trying to play with Shamgod. Number two on the big man for UConn. Chris Fowler, Digger Phelps coming up in the Delta Fawcett halftime report. Plenty of college basketball. More for the Big East. We see at West Virginia. The Orange, they are on a roll. Up to four and five in the conference. They've won three in a row. And we've already showed you Maryland and Florida State having a good one down in the ACC. Garces getting pushed around a little bit on the baseline. Turnover. UConn looking to snap a drought here. They've had only one free throw in the last few minutes, and they're down six. And Garces really jams things up when Freeman goes out to the corner. He's not even playing him out there. He's worried about him around the goal. But they exchange the high-low. Look at this. Claver stays or comes in. Crozier plays him. Big shot from the corner by Rochamel Jones. And they go 2-3. can hold it right to the end here, Dan. Shot clock turned off. 
20 of lead changes. Each team is at 8 0, 7 0 runs, that kind of thing. It's 26 22 Providence here, the final shot of the half to the Friars. The hot hand has been held by Derek Brown. Nice pass. Oh. Well, when you're a great guard, you can make the regular pass or you can make the bailout pass. Sham got almost turned this dribble over. It ends up coming up with it. And a lot of other guys would have kicked it out. Austin was waiting, but on the turn, he was going to release that jump shot. Found the guns. He squeezes and applies the finish. A little knockout by Ruben. Once he loads the guns, you, you best just let him go. You're not going to stop that guy from going. Get that ship out of town. UConn will have time to get a shot off. 5.3. Garces, the high shot on the free throw, barely got a rim. Here's Hardnick. Going to get a good look. Got it off and got it. Count the basket at the buzzer for Montequencio Hardnett, who finishes up the first half with 13 points and a little momentum boost there for UConn. But Derek Brown has been the man. 18 points, eight rebounds in the first half. It's 28-24 Providence as they try to make it four wins in a row. Let's send you back to the studio. The Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. Chris Fowler and Digger Phelps, guys. Dan Raff, thank you. So Brown carrying the low, but not a good sign for UConn when Austin Crozier is a non-factor on offense and Providence still leads the break. And the reason why, Jim Calhoun has done an excellent job of taking the 2-3 zone defense. He did it Sunday against Syracuse, kept the game close. He's doing the same thing today, and that's why Crozier is not having the half that he normally has. Better find out some way to stop Brown, though, with 18 points in the first half. Coming up on our Rivalry Week Delta Fawcett Halftime Report, we'll take a look at the Big East. Bigger says Syracuse is back. Also scores and highlights as Boston College leading the conference but going into West Virginia. They had a big win there last year and lost at home. We'll see what happens tonight. Florida State and Maryland as the Seminoles try to keep the Terrapins out of first place in the conference. payment be a financial burden? Call 1-800-32-SMART about Smart Lease by GMAC. It's an affordable way to drive off with a new GM vehicle. And it might even give you something you wouldn't mind carrying around. Hello, America! I'm Asking what's it like floating in space? What? Do you ever get a chance to sleep? It used to be that we just launched rockets into space. What's the scariest Today, through distance learning, MCI can launch entire schools. Yo, dude! What's the coolest game you got, man? Coolest? That would be... Virtual Entree. I'm Virtual Entree. 15 love. Would you look at that? Now entering the gate, the last gear of the day, number 12. You like rousing though? Want free stuff from ski resorts? Look for specially marked packages. Everybody wins. Derek Brown has 18. The Friars, who have never won a Gamble Pavilion, lead by four at halftime. Welcome back to our Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. Boston College, of course, leaders in their division of the Big East, going down to Morgantown, where they handed the Mountaineers the worst loss ever on their home floor a year ago. But Boston College, a team you think is struggling for confidence right now. Well, the confidence factor, let's take a look and see what's going on in this one. Well, Damian Owens knifes through right there, puts the Mountaineers up early. Wayne Woodward answers with a three. Makes the big three on the baseline. 
They're trading threes at this point. Selden Jefferson puts West Virginia back up on top, and then Gordon Malone inside, put back. BC not very aggressive at that point. Mountaineer is building a double-figure lead at that point. Now at halftime, it's 38-27. They don't want to be embarrassed at home again by this team. Well, BC's had this problem since they played Fairfield on the road, went overtime, then they lose to UMass at home, and then Villanova just punishes them last week. So there's a confidence factor right now for Jimmy O'Brien and BC anywhere, home or away. They dropped out of the top 25. Meanwhile, Notre Dame and Pittsburgh 17-13 Panthers midway in the first half as Pittsburgh tries to go over 500 in the conference. Meanwhile, down in the ACC, Maryland with a victory tonight in Tallahassee can tie Wake Forest, set up that big showdown for first place on the Terrapins home court in the weekend. But first, you got to take care of business against the Seminoles who have been slumping. Well, but Gary Williams is right now is in a great position. You know, you look at Clemson last week. They lose a stunning loss home to Wake Forest, go to Carolina, lose this weekend. Now Maryland's in the driver's seat again to challenge Wake, and that's coming up this weekend when we see it Saturday at Maryland. They continue to try to build on their best start in 16 years. Gary, feeling the pressure. Every game of the ACC in the road is a tough one. Laurent Profit in for the alley-oop slam from Stokes. Terrapins have the early lead. FSU hangs in there. Kenny Thompson, or Kerry Thompson, makes a steal. Alley-oop to Randall Jackson. FSU, then on the break. Ron Hale saw earlier the three-pointer. There he shows the fast break skills and right now it's a one point margin at halftime here. And Florida State's got that confidence. Florida State last week beat North Carolina home so they're not afraid of Maryland tonight. They're not afraid of anybody at home but they have been reeling. They've lost four out of the last six. Wofford gets Wake and right now it's tied. <laughs> Wake playing back to back games. They beat Virginia Tech last night as they take a break from the ACC. That's one of our powerful three independents that are left. Wofford, Southern Utah and Oral Roberts. And they got five senior starters in that team. Now, game number two tonight, one of the classic rivalries, not just in college basketball, in all of sports. The Tar Heels have beaten the Dukies seven straight times. They are underdogs tonight at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Stick around. That should be a lot of fun. Kentucky continues to have fun despite the loss of Derek Anderson, a 17-point lead in Gainesville. And you know, Rick Pitino says, hey, wait, you worked for me, you played for me, so kid, take a back seat. So Billy Donovan tonight's learning from the master of disaster, Rick Pitino. I thought, I thought he might give his former boss a little more trouble than that, actually. In the Big Ten, Wisconsin and Northwestern, Javon Johnson bounced past to Eschmeyer for the dunk in the very early going. Calderwood to Paul Grant for the jam. Wisconsin continues to roll here. Sam Oki in the lane gets the lefty to go, and Badgers controlling the early part of this ball game. Ty Calder with the steal, takes it down, and he'll eventually penetrate that with uh, Northwestern defense and get the banker to go. All Wisconsin highlights there, and they lead by seven in a low-scoring half, 25 to 18. When we come back, we'll talk about Syracuse. Digger saw him last night. He says, look out, Big East, they're back. This halftime report is presented by Delta Faucet and your dependable Delta plumbing professional. Together, they're the way water is brought to life. When plumbers hit the road, they carry more than a truckload of faucets and pipes. They carry knowledge about products, like why the finishes and solid brass construction of Delta faucets are right for you. They carry knowledge about styles and knowledge about procedures and codes that tell you they're as committed to perfection as we at Delta are. In fact, there's only one thing as dependable as Delta faucets, and that's the plumber who installs them. Delta, the way water is brought to life. Don't let a new car payment be a financial burden. Call 1-800-32-SMART. About Smart Lease by GMAC. It just might give you something you wouldn't mind carrying around. Don't let a new car payment get you all wound up. Call 1-800-32-SMART about Smart Lease by GMAC. It can put a new spin on affordability. Getting to the Final Four isn't easy. It takes a combination of work, talent, and courage. 
or a combination of these. The American Express card helps you do more at National Car Rental. Use it and get two scratch and score instant win cards. Every time you rent from participating national locations, you get a chance to win one of ten trips for two to the final four. This may be all you'll need to get to the final four. Of course, some of us will try and get there the hard way. Scratch and score from American Express and National Car Rental. If you missed it last night, Syracuse won their third straight game. They destroyed Seton Hall by 33. One big reason, defense. 14 block shots by five different players, Digger. And this is the defense now, that 2-3 zone that Syracuse always plays. The intimidation factor. Look at Thomas going up, blocking another one. And that's what I talked about last night. When you see their defense, Chris, now they got the intimidation factor inside. And Otis Hill was even in foul trouble last night, but the bench comes through inside. And their offense is even better. Yeah, because Todd Bergen is back, and they're undefeated since he came back. He's only one rebound short of three straight double-doubles since coming back. Well, when you look at Todd Bergen, what he brings to the table is offense. He can go to the hole, he can slash, he can shoot the threes, and in these three games that he's been back, Chris, he has combined for 43 points, 31 rebounds, and this just gives him a whole new dimension having him back in the lineup. But look at that pass from Jason Hart, who also had 15 points and 10, e uh, 10 assists. So when you get this whole thing rhythm, when, when Beheim, he's starting to smile a little bit now, the <laughs> fact is that Bergen's back, you've got that whole rhythm of offense and defense. Jason Hart from Englewood High School, California, another freshman in this country. 10 assists was big. They've got the 10 assist factor to transition, stretch, and so they, they can Nova, score. at BC, and Georgetown ahead. So we'll find out if Syracuse is, in fact, all the way back. Providence has come back and taken a four-point lead in this game. Ruben Garces on the feed from Jamal Thomas. The Friars up by four at the break. More Pizza Hut Player of the Week stuff coming up. About remodeling or building a new home? Then come to the Kitchen Design Center at Barrington Lumber, where you'll find a wide selection of the finest kitchen and bath cabinets from Crystal, Aristocraft, and more. Our showroom is filled with a variety of designs and features to help you create your dream kitchen or bath. Our experienced staff are always on hand to provide personalized service and assistance with computerized layout and design. In our own fabrication shop, you'll find a complete line of solid surface countertops. The Kitchen Design Center, selection, service, and satisfaction. Bubbles of info, bubbles of fun, bubbles of music. Ever wonder why these people do the Macarena? Or who styles Tina's hair? Well, find out on VH1's pop-up video. Fun-filled facts packed into your favorite videos. Only on VH1. U.S. gold medalist Mia Hamm spends 90 minutes destroying her hair and 90 seconds bringing it back with Pert Plus. More than a shampoo, it conditions too. How? As you shampoo, the conditioner stays suspended. As you rinse, the conditioners go to work, giving you great hair simply. Perfect for Mia, because she wants great hair, but she'd rather be living in it than working on it, wouldn't you? Pert Plus. Simply great hair. Simply. Pizza Hut Player of the Week time. I'm going to nominate Rafe LaFrentz of Kansas. Good Running choice. mate Scott Pollard is out. LaFrentz has stepped up the big game against Colorado in that hard-fought victory. He had 22 points, 15 boards, five blocks in that game. But he's not even, he's not the winner, Digger. Well, you look at Kelvin Cato, played well for Iowa State. Darnell Burton, six for nine, shooting the threes for Cincinnati. Nate Erdman from Oklahoma, big week. But the winner is, from Cal Berkeley, you have it, Ed Gray. 28 points over Washington, 30 points over Washington State. And when you take a look at what he's done, he's got five 30-point-plus games on the season, only one short of Mark McNamara's school record set in 1981-82. So, Ed Gray is the Pizza Hut Player of the Week as the Cal Bears are making a run for the Pac-10 Tut. Well, a big game home against the arch rivals from Stanford tonight. The second half from UConn coming up. This is no accident, and neither is this. Insurance fraud involves everything from staged accidents to arson to false medical claims, and it cost policyholders and their companies $18 billion last year. State Farm has long been a leader in the fight against fraud, and now we're working even closer with law enforcement agencies to help prosecute these criminals, because when they get away with fraud, everyone pays. The 
engineers at the Pontiac Grand Am design cars for people who get a kick out of driving, complete with a powertrain built to precise aerospace tolerances. And that's kept more Grand Dams tearing along even after 11 years than any car in its class. So buy a Grand Am for a good time. Have it around for a good long time. Grand Am. Built for kicks, built for keeps. Starting around 15-2. The Winter X Games brings together the greatest athletes from around the world. Athletes who've changed hey, the sport. Hey, isn't that our paper boy? Sure is. The Winter yeah. X Games, starting tomorrow at 8 p.m. on ESPN2. Presented by Taco Bell. The Star Wars trilogy is back on the big screen. And each planet is celebrating in a different way. On Earth, people are playing Feel the Force at Taco Bell. Press the game piece to magically reveal if you've instantly won cash, one of millions of prizes, or a special edition Hummer. See the trilogy, Feel the Force. Play the game at Taco Bell. Are you sure this is the right theater? I'm not even sure it's the right planet. So, Patrick, is it true you talk to your goalposts? I don't feel comfortable to answer that question. What about you? No. No, you can't say that on TV. I'm sorry. ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We are driving excitement. And by the new Coors Light wide mouth can. Tap the Rockies with a smoother pour. Welcome back to Gamble Pavilion and Stores. A pretty tough place to win generally, although recently UConn has struggled. Here's the score. It's a close one. It's a pretty frantic first half. Up and down. They didn't hit many shots. Providence leading by four. Dan Schulman and Bill Raftery with you. Big bucket right at the end of the half, and we mean right at the end of the half. Monquencio Hardnett, who had 13 big points in the first half. A missed free throw with 5.3 seconds to go, and Hardnett, quick look at the clock, penetrates a little, pulls up, and hits a two-pointer just as time expired. Brought UConn back within four. Gave him a lift heading into the break. What gave Providence a lift is Derek Brown has already exceeded his season average. He's so impressive because he plays without the basketball, has a knowledge, when to shoot, when to put it on the floor, when to contribute with his teammates. Just solid basketball. Austin Crozier, though, he's really struggled. He got two guys in Brown and Crozier who have similar averages. Brown's got 18 points. Crozier, not a one. And you heard Digger say the zone has held him in check, and he is correct. So they've got to get some motion, get him involved a little. Valuing the basketball, very important now, I think, for UConn. Don't turn it over. They had 12 that half. Not great shooting by either team. UConn has done a great job all season of holding its opponents to poor shooting numbers from the field. Brown did not start the second half the way he started the first, missing the jumper. And here's Hamilton the other way for UConn. Well, straight up man to man by the Friars. Arnett with the big 13 for Connecticut. Good things happen when Vosco touches the ball. He's doing a lot of picking. Oh, he caught his own pass, yeah. Arnett got all in between there, didn't know what to do with the ball. And Jimmy Calhoun just shook his head like, I don't believe <laughs> He's saying, shoot it. <laughs> well, that's what happens. We talked about young people. Crazy thing, they're not used to playing that guard spot. Little Georgia JC. It takes you a year once you get into a program. Even if you're a JC kid and had all that experience, just not as tough. Nice luck. But a foul before the shot. I don't think it's just a rush, Mel Jones. Down underneath his second and a quick sub here as Vosk is going to come out and Andrew Pleasure comes in just a minute into the second half. I, that's probably because he didn't close down defensive. Dave Leto down chatting with them, letting that entry pass get in. Foul trouble for Providence. Thomas and Wright each picked up three in the first half. Shamgod, he had five assists in the first half, but a turnover here. Hamilton, all the way. Now that's a heads up play by Thomas, though. Shamgod had Austin in the corner and went the other way for the turnover. Not 
the judgment usually that prevails. First two points of the night for Richard Hamilton as Crozier tries to get on track. He still has not scored. And an over-the-back foul on Garces. That'll be number two. Well, he likes to let you know he's in the house. And he is a load around the glass. I mean, he just challenged the front line of Connecticut. I mean, he didn't care if they were going to call the foul on him. It's tough to miss out there. Austin has some good luck, too. I mean, he's just sliding a little bit on that release. Remember, two games ago, four points against St. John's, then 27 against Canisius last time out, and now nothing so far. Fighting through it is Jones. Wanted the return pass, but didn't get it from Hamilton. Now he does. Now to finish Austin, last 12 games, he's been averaging almost 20 points, though, so it's not just... In the Big East or playing poorly here and there, it's been solid against good competition as well. Number two on Brown. Crozier had, has had a couple of big years. He was not all that highly recruited. Coming out of Los Angeles, almost found his way to UConn, as a matter of fact, but they awarded the scholarship to Kirk King, so he wound up at Providence. And you would expect him to knock big numbers down against UConn. Mm -hmm. but Rick Barnes uh, loved them. I mean, he almost went through down a nice pass by Harnett. And Kleber sending it in. Into the game for Voskel. He makes his presence felt, and we've got a tie game at 28. When things get a little flat, Corey Wright gets the call. Nice look here. Garces missed the left-hander off the glass. And it'll go over to the Huskies. A 4-0 run to start the second half. Pete Gillen's team needs some answers. And there's one way to get it. A 20. He does not take his timeouts home or to the bank. He uses them all. And they are struggling a little bit. He opts now for the smaller lineup going with Corey Wright just to invigorate. Let Sham God play off the ball a little bit. This is good, solid basketball. Austin struggling with the offense, but a great dump down, down in low, and Ruben unable to convert. Switch to that left hand. A little harsh with the delivery on the kiss. Austin's mom came in. Pat, or his dad, is home watching the ball game. Pete. So mom must be a little unsettled with his offensive performance. He's had a terrific career at Providence. You might remember last summer he was playing for the 22 and under team that gave Dream Team 3 the scare of its life in an exhibition game. And Crozier had 10 points and what's best remembered is a real solid block of a Shaquille O'Neal shot. Took the Shaq away from the rack, huh? <laughs> and there's a full page picture of that on the Providence media guide as well there should be. Straight up man, nice hedge. And a six on the shot clock. Hardnett sees it and puts it up. Flat shot. And a tough save by Garces off to Corey Wright, as Bill mentioned, back in there with his three fouls. Boy, he has been unselfish. I mean, that's great when your starter, that's, that, he deserves that. Not on fire, but within himself. I mean, that's what happens when you're a senior, too. You get that understanding of what should be done. Don't rush it. His first three points of the night, and the Friars lead by three. Devin Freeman had a good first half, except at the line for UConn. Closure guarding him. And Hamilton trying to post up Corey Wright. They forgot about him. Now they give a little staggered screen. Look at the help by Shamgat. Freeman over Crozier. Tough shot. Claver knocks it away, but to Shamgat in numbers for Providence. Oh, what a steal by Rashamel Jones. Look at two on one. Freeman and Hamilton with a pretty give and go for the easy two. And Dan, that was smart, too, because Wright was looking to pick up a charge on them. They passed it, took him out of the play. Every time Providence pulls away, UConn climbs back in. Crozier down and through. Almost a match on each guy on the perimeter here. Corey Wright penetrates. Now Shamgod from the corner. Way up. And UConn can take the lead. Oh. 
Worked the first down. Well, let's not Ricky <laughs> Moore making the play, huh? Derek Brown with two more. Give him 20. Corey Wright gives them a whole new dimension. You, you said the two-point guard mentality. He can find people just like Sham got. Why, Ali? Get a deuce. <laughs> Jimmy is going to be gray before Moore gets back, and that's next week. Monday night, Georgetown in Hartford. First game of Big Monday. Jones walked. He's done that a few times. He sure has. And Hamilton's down on the box. They're not looking to him on right. Had a big height advantage. They didn't take advantage of it. UConn with some exciting plays. The alley-oop. Hamilton to Freeman. Got them on their feet here in stores. Did you know that every time you buy one of our beers, you'll get a date? Every time. Honest. You see, every package of ours has a little date printed right on it in plain language. The beer doesn't sell by that day. We take it back. Now, I suppose we could put a secret code on our packages, but then all you'd get is a blind date. If you ever take your Pontiac Sunfire driving through some famous expressionist painting, hey, it'll fit right in. Because it looks like a work of art, right? And it drives. <laughs> like a real scream. Pontiac Sunfire. Driving excitement for round 13.5. Pizza Hut employee memo number five. A word about napkins. It stands to reason that if you create a pepperoni that has less grease per piece of pepperoni, you're going to need less napkins. So, less napkins it is. On the other hand, if you put more pepperoni on the pizza, you might need more napkins. Which means, after some serious deliberation, we recommend the same amount of napkins. Okay, can we consider the napkin question put to rest? Now we can go on to placemats. You're on placemat. So feel free to let everyone know we're making it great again and again. In high school, the three-pointer was not a part of Austin Crozier's game, but it has become that, especially here in his senior season. He could pass in high school, I'm sure, because he's played solid, giving it up. That time, defense turns, moves the space so that when the defense returns, he's not in the same area. Very knowledgeable move, and there's the possessions. No assists, but a lot of fumbled opportunities. 18 touches, and really a lot of those where his back was to the basket, zone capitalizing, pinching down, had to give it out. So even though he's struggling, he's been within the framework. He is one of four seniors on Pete Gillen's team. This is their year. The Big East top teams have come back to the pack. Providence is the most experienced team in the league. Garza spins, and Bosco got him on the arm. Bosco knows it's him, and it's number three. Now, we mentioned earlier the duck-in. Ruben Garza's begging for the ball. It'll be now noted the truck-in. The step-in, and no defense at home. That's an experience inside as well. You look at scores from around the nation. Wake Forest and Kentucky, both with leads. Great game between Maryland and Florida State of the ACC, and some big East battles going on as well tonight. And West Virginia and Pitt both leading by 10 on their home courts. Florida State's played well of late, and that league, as you noted, so many solid teams. Garces missed them both. Does the foul shooting drive you crazy to watch it? Uh, Ru Ruben, 49% uh, coming in. I mean, you lift all those weights. Uh, you better shoot while you lift them, huh? Just to get a little touch. How about this combined tonight? The two teams are four for 13 from the line. Well, they're not used to standing still, kids. Nice little stop. Hardnick got it back. Puts it up again. Missed it again, and the rebound to Brown. Derek does a lot of things. Including getting away with almost a walk. 22, a game high. What patience, too. Now, you thought he scraped the foot along the floor, but the ability to pull up, reset, he ends up with a deuce. A little pressure by Providence, but Hardnett gets through it. That was one of the big storylines coming in. Without Ricky Moore, could UConn have handled the Providence pressure? And they've been adequate. I think some of the turnovers are those on their own, not, not really the good defensive pressure. Labor. Got a clear out left. Now they fell. 
Hamilton's been quiet. Back in one and shoot the jumper. Good. There you go. Wright wanted the charge. Instead, Hamilton gets the deuce. See, that, they should have read that earlier, these kids. Not taking advantage. He had posted up a couple times. Did not look in. Shuffled his feet, did Corey Wright. Back over to the Huskies. Second half of our doubleheader tonight is as good as it gets. North Carolina and Duke out of the best league of the country, the ACC. How about this, Bill? 25 of the last 32 times those two schools have met. They've both been ranked. Tremendous. Great, great. Well, you know, Dean's been there for quite a while. Long before me, they get a walk by Freeman on the inbounds. And there's a guy that's just lit up. First half was extraordinary. This half, settling in, just playing his normal kind of a game. But you, the referee always says you can't move. And kids forget the excitement. That's one of those mistakes due to pressure, I think. They extend it to defense. Garces looking for his shot. Line drive, left it short. And Crozier came up with the offensive rebound and drew the foul underneath. Well, basketball is like a test. I mean, life is a test. Basketball is. Things don't go your way. You pack the tent, pack the tent. No, you keep active. Now, this particular shot is off the mark. And Ruben may have said it was a pass, but Austin, because of the activity, ends up with a chance for two. You just keep battling. Things will turn as long as you expend the effort. He really has his sights set on the next level. He'll talk openly about wanting to play professional basketball. And Look at that progression, yeah. Dan, huh? Just exactly what you're saying. The effort in Pete Gillen earlier in that bite we had, just saying off the floor what he's done to make himself a better player. One of the best free throw shooters in the Big East. He hits them both. He's got five, and the Friars have a five-point lead. There's some pressure. A little trap in here. A little 2-2-1. Two, two, in a hurry to get it over, and they do. Good presses get you from the rear, and uh, LeBlanc, who can shoot, being forced to put it on the floor. A little extra crossover move. We talked about UConn having to take care of the ball. 17 turnovers. A lot of guys handling the ball in areas they wouldn't generally get it. And that's the dilemma now. And if you can shoot like LeBlanc, you're going to attract because Ricky Moore's not around. Nothing but air on that shot. And Hamilton racing after it. Finds LeBlanc. Wide open three, Rasham L. Jones. Great kick. Look at the numbers here. Rozier gives it up to the man who should get it, Shamga. <laughs> they ended up with a tough shot, did they? Well, you always defer to God in the open floor. <laughs> or in life. Seven-point lead, Providence. Nice look. Well, he can pass. He's a rascal with the ball, isn't he? And another little point mentality. Take the shake. You got to give UConn a lot of credit. They played Kansas so tough in that game without King and Moore, and now they're hanging in with a very good Providence team as well. Well, this program has a lot of pride, and they should over the accomplishments. Nice denial by Bosco in there. Here's Freeman. A chance to narrow a five-point gap. Now, this is your point guy. I mean, he's a swing player up front. Now, this is what makes it interesting, and he's going to be tough because he'll be able to handle a little more confidently. They're switching those exchanges. When Moore comes back, Hamilton probably goes to a small forward spot. Uh -huh. Now, that's the way you get out on a hedge. From the corner, LeBlanc. That would have been a big one. Jamel Thomas with the rebound. He's been very quiet. Has not scored yet. Derek Brown has done a ton of scoring. He's going to get a shot for two more. And if it's Bosco, it's number four. I think it was Jake with the little hip check. When you watch Providence, look at all the people that can handle the ball on the floor. Austin did a decent job on that fast break. That time, Thomas tips to himself, comes the other way, makes the delivery, and the wise maneuverability of Derek Brown pays dividends as he gets to the line, but the ability to catch and handle the open floor at all spots key for Providence. 
This is the tough thing that all the other Big East coaches talk about. You can shut down two options. They got two more they can throw at you. And Derek Brown potentially on pace for a career night. His best effort is 29 points. He's got 22 as Jake Voskel sits down with four fouls and still better than 10 minutes to play. 82% free throw shooter as well here. Making it. They can mix up the D here. One for two. Timeout on the floor. Six-point lead for Providence on the road. Looking for their fourth win in a row. Trying to go six and three in the Big East. Introducing Coors Light's wide mouth can. It provides an exceptionally smooth core with less glove. This is because of the wide mouth opening. It's the innovation you've been waiting for your whole life. Or is that just me? The Pontiac Firebird waits. 305 horsepower comes to life. Ram air induction turns air into fuel in a rush. Firebird, you're ready to fly. Man, it's cold. You said it. There's something going on here. Looking for a way to warm up this winter? Come to Wendy's. You look like you could use a couple of spicy chicken sandwiches. Wendy spicy chicken sandwich is a whole breast fillet seasoned with Dave's own blend of pepper and spices. It's got a spicy hit that'll make you feel warm all over. Serves up. We gotta, we gotta get another one. Come in this winter and warm up with a Wendy spicy chicken sandwich. Here's your average beer can. Notice that annoying glug sound. Now here's Coors Light's wide mouth can. A larger opening means a smoother pour. Listen. Whisper soft. At Tallahassee, the Seminoles getting a bunch of threes and also some inside play from Randell Jackson, who works down low on Keith Booth here. In the second half now, the Seminoles lead by six, guys. Boy, they're playing well. And here, Jake Bosco, who has picked up his fourth foul, that's a problem. He's had a good game, especially distributing the ball. Well, bit. Pat Kennedy's getting it inside where he can be damaging and not much inside play. Uh, Bosco now with the foul problems, but you are correct. Get it to him and add it to mention. And it gets it to people who can finish. Real strong play, and he got a lot of enthusiasm. And Ricky, you'll be back to do the same. He's practicing with the Huskies and lit it up shooting today at practice. And we've got a block underneath on the Friars. But Ricky Moore is going to be the lot to Connecticut when he comes back on a Monday. And Claver in the open floor making a pretty good judgment. Had the angle. You got the angle. Calhoun wants you to attack the pressure. Number three on Garces. Claver's going to get some minutes here with Bosco on the bench. He is just a 35% shooter from the line, and you can see UConn's already had a miserable night there. And in a close game, everyone counts. Well, it's tough. I mean, you don't make these. It's a, a wasted trip. Take the gloves off now. Nice and relaxed. Bend the knee. Follow through. Be in rhythm. There you go. Talk him through it. Nicely done. Just a 60% shooting team from the line. It'll add some wrinkles to your forehead. <laughs> They're within five, though. And the little 2 3 has been their trademark D all night. Look for a little penetration by Sham. Got her right at the end of this. I'll try and find somebody. Nice luck. Oh, goodness. What a block by Kleber on Garces. Well, that will endear him a little bit to the. Head coach. Now, Jim Calhoun wasn't thrilled with a couple of Claver's plays in recent games, huh? No, it was his judgment. In the Syracuse game, he felt he could have done a little bit more. Both Brown and Crozier on the bench right now for Pete Gillen as Hartnett, who is having a career night, give them 15 points, and more importantly, they're back within three. Kept active and used that bump to free himself. comes the noise that this place is so famous for. Murdoch, another block by Claver. Oh, and he calls timeout. How he about this? It. Oh. Jimmy, say you love him now. 
Give him a hug. Oh, as he stepped up. Well, some players react better to a little challenge, a little chastisement. He has been terrific. One out of two free throws, which for him is good. A couple of blocks, and then the timeout. He's had an active couple of minutes. And Sham God with great penetration. And now the dish, you think you got yourself something, but he went for Sham God, recovered, got a piece of it. Just paying attention to detail. Here he comes again, and this is just a heads up play. I think TV has a lot to do with this now. Guys jumping in the air, calling the timeout. It's all Jason Kidd's fault. <laughs> 40 to 37, Providence leading Connecticut with 9.29 to play. Jake Boskell on the bench with four fouls for UConn. Hasn't dampened the spirits of anybody here, though. Suspensions, three losses in a row at home. They are still packing this place. But you, you don't know who's going to step up with this kind of group now, and that's what's it's fun. It's also exasperating. The guy who stepped up has the ball right now on Quincy O. Hardnett. Just his fourth start has matched his career high with 15 points. And he's handling against a guy who gets about three steals a game. Like, didn't he have 10 one game early in the year? Jam got against Brown. Nine and one half in that game. Here he's got one here. Pretty long. Crozier. Oh, what a great delivery. So catchable. Oh, put it on a plate, Sam got. Freeman at the other end, trying to hammer it down and got fouled. I think it was Garces, too. If it is, it's number four. No, I think they give it to Thomas. It is Jamel Thomas, and it's number four on him. Here's Watch the steal at the other end. Dan, look at this look. I mean, out in front of the pack, leads the guy in stride. Good, strong run by Austin Crozier, complimented by the analysis pass. And Freeman hits, so maybe their fortune's turning around a little bit at the line. Very spirited performance by UConn and this guy. They're having their difficulties just adjusting. That's the one position on the floor, if you're not comfortable or used to it and have the understanding of how to run a team, you can't do it in a couple of practices the friendly roll. He'll take it. He has been struggling with that release. He's got eight points and nine rebounds. Good night for Kevin Freeman and the noise even louder. Remember all the ability to penetrate on the floor. Look at this look. You can't give him those. He's a prime timer. He steps up late all within the flow of the game. And all ten of his points in the second half. Six-point Providence lead, eight and a half to play. Harden it wide open. The throws the rebound. Traffic stacks. Oh, is that big? Double, yeah. Put it, patted it down, patted it down again. See, Ruben Garza is really looking for his offense, but the move's not all that refined. More of a force his way to the basket kind of guy. The more you watch coaches on the sideline, it reflects the emotion of the game. They're great living. You can put the kids through school, but you do pay a price. You, you, you take it home with you at night. A turnover by Harden, and here's Shamgar the other way. Jake Bosco back in with four fouls for UConn, and another big three, Derek Brown. All set up by Shamgar's pilfering from behind. You've got to recognize inexperience showed on that play. Largest lead of the night for the Friars, 48 to 39. Derek Brown has better than half their points. He's got 26, and Providence looking to go six and three in the Big East. Do all winter long. Watch TV, take a lot of naps, put on a few extra pounds. Wrong. Sure, what else? Sport announces our once a year anniversary sale. Take control of your body and join the area's largest, most complete fitness and sports clubs for only $23. Lose weight, gain strength, look and feel better at Sherwood. Take advantage of the $23 offer. Ready to get in shape? Sherwood has the solution to your resolution. Located Route 6 Seacock behind Fantasyland. 508 336 6565. When it comes to Friday night action, one place. Puts out. I have dreams about it. More sex, more drugs, more rock and roll. Tell me about it, Mister. The 
VH1 Rock and Roll Picture Show. What's better than hanging around with you dorks? I'm a winner, baby! <laughs> the VH1 Rock and Roll Picture Show on VH1. <laughs> You want to thank mom, you want to thank daddy. You know, I want to go take a nap. That's where you come in. Five seconds left, we pop you out of the penalty box. Five, four, three, two. Uh oh, here comes Jeremy Roenick. I better finish my speech. Boom. Jeremy's spoken. Okay? Put the biscuit in the basket. The ESPYs with Hootie and the Blowfish, Lisa Leslie, and Carrie Strug. February 10th at 7.30. Presented by General Motors and No Fear. Good, good. Okay, stop. Jeremy, stop. Jeremy! <laughs> Better than 10,000 here in stores are going to need to muster all the energy they can find because Providence was bolted out to its biggest lead of the night, and it's their big-time players stepping up. Well, they started young here at UConn, and this guy started young. Uh, silenced the first half. I thought he did some nice passing. Let the game come to him. Austin knocks him down. But this is the guy that causes damage in the open floor. The ability to steal from behind, and Derek Brown, who carried it all in the first half, able to knock it down. Providence putting the clamps on UConn tonight. 19 turnovers they forced, and a team like UConn does not have as much of a margin for error as Providence. They got to get some shots up. They do, and they're going to have to get something off their defense as well at this juncture in the game. So it could be a gamble that hurts them as Providence gets to the open floor. Remember Voskel in with four fouls. Hamilton had it go around, but stay out. And who's up in the air but Garces? And stay away. Uh, that getting back to those rebound drills, you can see. Imagine getting, I bet the Dennis in the Providence area <laughs> love having him on the floor. You think the elbows have inflicted oh. a little damage? Yeah, I think he's rearranged a few chicklets. Brozier's hit one from down there. A tough look. Brown almost got it up and off, but Crozier with the follow, he's got a dozen. That's just out scrapping right there. 8-0 run for the Friars, 50 to 39. This one's starting to get away from UConn a little bit. Less than seven minutes to play. This is where decisions become essential. The less experienced you are under stress, the more difficult it is to get things accomplished. Tough shot there. Hardnett, double dribble. Another turnover. Tell you what, that was questionable. He had a little trouble with the handle. I see two hands go on it, though. Coming up Saturday, more college basketball, this time from the Atlantic 10. Dayton, remember them, the big win over Xavier earlier in the season. They're going to take on a Virginia Tech. Ace Custis leads the Hokies in both scoring and rebounding. They're going to try to keep pace with Xavier and GW. Atop the A-10 East, like so many other conferences. It's wild. They it's don't sure know who's going to win. Bill Foster down there. I think this will be the last year retiring. Former Clemson coach, Miami coach, and that East down in the hole. What a way to go out. Did you see that in the South Temple game last night? I, I did not, but I heard it was typical big five. Huh? Such shot by Garces. Double overtime last night before Pepe Sanchez won it on a 30-footer. Thomas, Shamgar, Crozier, and they're pulling away. A little closure by Shamgar to Crozier. Nice little look. I mean, he is unselfish. Pete Gillen said, I think he's playing the best I've seen him and maybe running the point as well as anybody in the conference. And there's some good point guards in this conference as you take a look at other scores from around the country. A 10-0 run for Providence. Looks like Kentucky's had a bit of a run of their own. And Billy Donovan paying a price for sitting alongside Rick Pitino. That would be a big one for this the state. What? Pat Kennedy. Well, he's been knocking at the door a little bit. Got a chance to close it right now, and look at West wow. Virginia. Early, wow. in, early in the year, Jimmy Beheim thought they were the best team in the Big East, and then they had a lot of ups and downs, uh, personnel difficulties, but uh, if they get right it, they're going to be awfully tough come stretch time. Well, after that game, every team in the Big East will have won at least three, and every team will have lost at least three. Providence would be 6-3 and three with a win tonight. It has been eight years since the Providence Friars were ranked in the top 25. Well, you got to get better late. I mean, that's the key. Their next game is home against BC. This is a big week for Providence. They win a couple of games, they might find themselves in the polls. Now, you see that inadvertent turnover there? Unforced. 
Yes. And Pete Gillen, who everybody wanted when he was at Xavier, passed up a few opportunities. Shut up to Providence. I've said this publicly. You win at Providence, he'll be Italian before you know it. And he'll, he'll own the hill. So they are stepping up nicely. And I think the point position and Austin's philosophy, I mean, he is one of those unselfish, talented guys. Just plays within the system, rings the bell when they ask him. Look at a guy like Jamel Thomas, 14 and a half a game, hasn't scored tonight, but he's made some incredible passes and has helped out the offense in other ways. Nice play here. Everything but, huh? Put a string on it. Got to get a shot off. Brown. Well, it's his night, but not on that shot. UConn hasn't scored in four minutes. Pretty. They stretch the D a little bit, but no gambling. Uh, he just knows he doesn't have the personnel right now to trap and rotate. Plus, this guy breaks things down so well. Another place where having a Ricky Moore on the floor might help. Corey Wright getting set to check back in. They'll have two ball handlers the rest of the way. Four and a half to play and an 11 point Providence lead. The Friars have never won in this building. Well, the way the way he's going, that's going to take care of that. They're 0 and 6 here at Gamble Pavilion, but they lead by 14 right now. You know, Shan got up to 47 percent, getting more confident with that outside jumper. Nice deflection again. Brown, he got grabbed, and he'll get the carry through. He'll get the basket and the foul. Just on the arm at the rear. Oh, they've had a lot of open floor soirees. A lot of it off turnovers, a lot of it off missed shots, scrapers. The deflection here sets this one up. And you can see out ahead of the pack. This is a good call to be late. You can just see that swipe. Unnecessary. You can't get there. Let it go. And all you're doing is contributing, particularly with the strength of guys now, to the three-point play or potential. Brown has matched his career high with 29 points. He's got half of Providence's offense, and they're on their way to winning in this building for the first time ever. Breaking into pay-per-view. You refuse payment? I launched the gas. I'm off from Alcatraz. Out. Ready or not. Welcome to the rock. No pressure. It's time. Fire. To rock. Nicholas Cage, Ed Harris. The Rock, coming to pay-per-view, rated R. Coors Light, the Silver Bullet. It's frost brew to tap the clean taste of the Rockies. Hey, where'd you come from? the Hall of Fame, my man. You guys look bigger on TV. Spider-like traction of all-wheel drive. The new Subaru 2.5 GT can take you places those European sports sedans simply can't. Mere mortals. at all. North Carolina and Duke. Terrific second half to the rivalry week. Doubleheader tonight. I don't think Jim Calhoun's all that thrilled with part one of the doubleheader. This was a close game, but Providence has blown it open in the last few minutes. Derek Brown with 29 for the Friars. Rashamel Jones at the other end. Here comes the pressure. Yeah, this is the 2-2-1 that they love, and it really churns up some turnovers trying to quicken the pace. And they get the foul on the end. A little fumble by Derek Brown. 
two or three on him. He was like a receiver there running before he had the ball. Well, the point totals have gone down. You can see that you lose the Allens of the world. We mentioned Travis Knight. Uh, that's the difference right here. Uh, the consistent uh, NBA type player going back to Daniel and Donnie Marshall. No relation uh, through last year. Do you see enough from the three freshmen? I guess the four with LeBlanc that in a year or two this is going to be an awful good team. Yeah, I, I think they've got the makings because they're very good shooters. Now that's a struggle for them because they're not comfortable. I mean, they don't have, they're not fed the ball properly or not in position to make the shot. And I think uh, with Bosco in the center and some solid play on the perimeter, they're going to get better and better. And their game is to stretch it out, challenge. That's what Jimmy did at Northeast. Really pushed, get after you. Sam God to Crozier in a huge second half. 16 points all in the second half for Austin Crozier. Well, if you ask Austin if he believes in God, he's not an atheist after playing with this guy. <laughs> he said they got to walk here at the end, but that's just four hands on the ball. But Sham God, and they're just uh, thanking one another. Well, that's the way you should start every day, huh? Thanking God. Thanking God, especially on this team. God, Sham God has dealt off nine assists in this game. But Austin so well versed in control, I think, at this point in his career. A lot of guys uh, get their red neck when you don't get your shots. Three seconds, got away with it. Chanel Jones open for the jumper. And another rebound for Crozier. Traffic, too. I mean, he's going for a couple of biggies. out on UConn. They're going to lose their fourth straight at home for the first time in 25 years. Straight up, man. All the guys can handle. This is uh, that's pretty. Maybe they doesn't make it. You can just see the impact of good perimeter bouncers. Freeman on the baseline with a tough jump. Get something on this end. This is key. Stir it up a little. They got one earlier on Derek Brown. Tough with him in the middle, huh? tough. All the way. No basket. Offensive foul on Shamgar. Now, right there, you may have seen the little exchange by Jamel Thomas and Shamgar, and he felt he should have had it. I don't think Shamgar charged, by the way. Providence foul. Here's a guy that gives everybody the basketball, Jamel. Just relax a little bit. You got to win. Don't get peppery. A team with as much potential as this team has this year. And Sam got with nine assists and how many countless passes that led to an assist to other people. That extra pass. Time now for the Wendy storyline. Connecticut has not been able to hang on to the basketball, and Providence has taken advantage, especially Derek Brown, a career-high tying 29 points. Assist-to-turnover ratio, how much do the Huskies miss Ricky Moore? That's incredible. 9 to 23. Jimmy Stamos will have to question those numbers. Uh, the authenticity of it totally. <laughs> but uh, that will put you to sleep early. Giving the ball up against a team that knows how to finish. Good counterpunch team. Lost in a soon-to-be defeat among Quincio Hardnett. He's got a career-high 17 points after those two free throws. Again, Monday night, you and I will be back here for the first game of the big Monday triple header. Georgetown, Connecticut, in Hartford. You know what we found in this league, at least this year? You don't know who's going to show up. I mean, Georgetown the other day, look at his wide open look. They never recovered after the 2-2-1. And a new career-high 31 for Brown. And Georgetown just outstanding the other day. He really got after a typical old time and right in the open floor. I'm going to go catch him. That's a play. <laughs> Put the brakes on. Why not? 15 point lead, a minute 20 to play. So many finish, options. Finishing the thought on Georgetown, when they get after it defensively, they shoot the ball better. They use so many things better. And I'm sure John's been hammering that home. Take on Villanova right now. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I, I, I'd love to be talking to Steve Lapis. I mean, he doesn't know. I mean, they play BC very well, and yet the sometimes the, it's the opponent too. I think Georgia just came out. They didn't meet that tempo, that emotion. Quincy O'Harden is still down underneath the basket. Oh. And the last thing that. 
Hardnett or Jim Calhoun or anybody associated with Connecticut needs is to lose another player. And that shoulder turns the corner and right here maybe just the way he hit the floor does this you know they see the the banging of bodies that usually causes the problem he had just gone down clean it wouldn't been any difficulty LeBlanc in the back there may have just had that knee in a position where it inflicted the punishment his back is what they appear to be looking at and an anxious Calhoun out on the floor the significance of this game as they continue to monitor Harden underneath the basket. He is yet to even be able to roll over or sit up. Here's the Big East 7 in Providence with the win tonight. We'll move into a tie with Miami at 6 and 3. Miami is idle tonight. How about Miami? They've won a lot of tough games. Uh, Norris at the point, real solid for them. And, uh, People don't give them the credit either. And you notice uh, it, it's in the conference, it's one of the teams they talk to about a little bit later mm -hmm. after they mentioned some of the heavyweights. But the guard has changed, folks. That'll be a big one. Boston College in Providence coming up. AC was getting waxed last time we looked by West Virginia. The other side of the conference, the Big East Six. Well, BC, they were down 25 when last we looked, so they'll drop to 7 and 3. Villanova has struggled of late. UConn will fall to four and five. West Virginia might be the wild card team on this side. They're going to go to six and four with a win tonight. Solid. And again, talk about uh, them early in the year. Get their situation straightened out. And the ovation you hear is for Hardman, who after a couple of minutes is gingerly making his way over to the Connecticut bench. I'm always uh, happy to see a guy get up and be able to motor and also know that it was a clean play or just an inadvertent injury great night from Unquencio Harden making just his fourth start a career high 17 points and let's hope that this is something he can shake off he hopes so he's played well I mean, he mentioned the numbers uh, just trying to do what he can to make things function Moore back in the lineup Monday. Villanova, Georgetown at the Civic Center in Hartford. First game of the big Monday triple header here on ESPN. Uh, that little steal. Uh, I just looked at the bench over there. Dave Leto, Tom Moore, Carl Hobbs looking at Jimmy. And that, they used to do that to other people. A gap there, Georgetown, UConn. Mm -hmm. That'd be a game if Georgetown, Villanova played at the Civic Center in Hartford. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Providence guys, I mean, they got to feel pretty good. Tommy Hurrian and Bobby Gonzalez, Mike Malone, the assistants. I mean, they worked hard today to go over the offensive maneuvers and what to prepare for against UConn. They were solid. It was a four-point game at the half. Jones misses the jumper. It's a 15-point lead, and the man with the ball has been the story. Derek Brown with exactly half of the Friars' 62 points in this game. And for the first time ever, Bill, the Providence Friars are getting out of Gamble with a win. Pretty good effort. Tough place to come in and perform, but when you've got some answers, which you have got in the middle, Corey Wright helping at times playing smaller, and Austin Crozier just solid. Not having a good first half. Let the game come to him, and Derek Brown carried it that first half. Providence is now one four in a row. The Huskies have lost four straight. The final score, Providence 62, Connecticut 47. Coming up next, Rivalry Week continues from Cameron, Duke in North Carolina. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Here's Chris Fowler. Fellas, we are minutes away from the classic rivalry. Anton Jameson and North Carolina against Duke. The Tar Heels have won seven straight in the series. Duke is primed tonight. Welcome back. Digger Phelps joins me. You said before the game, UConn was a sinking ship. They really just ran out of gas tonight, or, or I guess took on more water to continue the metaphor. But Get it out of the boat. It's going down. And what happened, Chris? Look, Jim Calhoun is one of those coaches that we don't like losing. He's lost four in a row. He's searching for a way to win. He loves his own press. He can't do it. He has no depth. He loves to make the defenses keep switching. He has to start in his own. He has no offense because he has no point guard in Ricky Moore. All these negatives now really take that program, and yeah, the ship's sinking, so he's trying to find a way to bail out the boat. But it's tough to learn that patience. I'll tell you, he does not handle loss as well. You wonder if he's going to no snap at some point. Believe me, I didn't. He didn't. And, and it's just one of those things you can't control. 
and you just try to do the best you can with the kids you have. And the younger players are helping them, but they just run out of gas the last 10 minutes again as they did against Syracuse. As we count down to the Dukies and the Tar Heels, a lot to talk about in college hoops tonight. We're going to keep you honest. You know, while we have three priests, I, I kid you not, three priests here in the studio to keep close eye on Digger and his comments, you cannot tell a lie, all right? BC and West Virginia, you said going in, 